Welcome to Cloud 941. I'm your host, Ron Filipkowski. This is the only live television show on Sarasota politics and issues, and we have a very important show tonight, and we'll explain why in just a minute. But first, my commentary on the news. Last Thursday, I was able to sit down and have lunch with Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio was the Speaker of the House of Representatives here in Florida, and he is also a, currently a candidate for U.S. Senate, although he hasn't formally announced it. And I sat down, and the very first question I asked him was this. If Charlie Crist runs for Senate, as I have predicted and said many times, that he will run for Senate and Vern will be the next governor of Florida, Vern Buchanan, what will you do? Everybody believes that Rubio will then shift over and run for governor or run for attorney general. He told me point blank he will not do that, that he is going to run for Senate, whether Crist gets in or not, and he actually looks forward to running against Crist in the Republican primary. Now, a lot of people assume that Charlie Crist is going to would run away with that election at Cakewalk, but not so fast. It's a Republican primary, which means Republican voters only. And a large chunk of Crist's popularity and support comes from independents and Democrats. He could have a difficult time with the conservative Rubio in a Republican primary. Rubio is going to be making the rounds coming through Sarasota in the next couple of weeks for several speaking engagements. If you get a chance to go check him out, he's an impressive young guy. Next is our Hero of the Week. As you know, we do our Weasel of the Week segment at the end of the show, but we have a hero this week, and that's Judge Lee Hayworth. Judge Hayworth set up a special court. Home foreclosures were up, have been up 600% in Sarasota County. And what he did is these foreclosures were zipping through so fast and people were being turned out of their homes that he came up with some new rules requiring lenders to sit down and actually the attorneys to actually mediate with the homeowners and requiring the attorneys to actually show up in person and appear for foreclosure hearings, which has slowed the process down, given some owner, homeowners a chance to get caught up on their payments and has slowed the home foreclosure rates down. Judge Hayworth is somebody who look, looks out for the people. He's a good guy, he's a smart judge, and he's our hero of the week. Now, to really what is the focus of tonight's show, and that is this. I believe that we have, in our midst here in Sarasota County, what is about to become, unfortunately, a serial killer, unless he's caught. Uh, as many of you know, I, I've been a federal prosecutor, state prosecutor, involved in the criminal justice system for 15 years here in so Sarasota County, and been a criminal defense lawyer for many years. And this, this guy who's doing these home invasion robberies where he's targeting women who live home alone is exhibiting all the classic signs of a serial killer. He has specific uh, victims that he's targeting. They're consistent. His methods that he's using are consistent, where he's targeting women that live alone or are home alone. And he's using the same uh, modus operandi and that he's beat, beating them. The, the crimes have increased in severity. Each one is worse. The worst one was last weekend, which occurred in Gulfgate, where he beat a woman to death with a baseball bat. The only reason now why he can't be called a serial killer is he's actually only murdered one of the nine victims. All of the victims were in Sarasota. They're all the west part of Sarasota, west of Beneva, uh, south of downtown, north of the Sarasota Square Mall. But if you look at where these nine women live on the map, it's pretty scary. And it, this is not getting the coverage it should get. Law enforcement's doing their job. They're keeping a low profile, keeping their head down, trying to catch this guy. The media is not doing a sufficient job. There's only been one story on this in the newspaper. This should be a much bigger story, and the women in our community particularly should be a much more aware of this situation and take measures to protect themselves because this is a very dangerous and volatile situation. There have been nine attacks in the last six weeks. And so that's why we've brought in tonight's guest. Tonight's guest is uh, Louis Pichet. Am I saying your name correctly, Louis? Perfect. Thanks Thank for you. coming on the show. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Louis, why don't you tell our viewers um, who you are, what your background is? Okay. My name is uh, Louis Pichet, and I started doing crime prevention programs in 2003. In 2007, I decided to start my own company. Um, I wanted my crime prevention program to be different from the other crime prevention programs that were out there. And in, it, in my programs, I saw the crime prevention officers, uh, chief of police attending the different programs that I was uh, doing, and I asked them what would make mine different. And 
the theme across the board was that you should enroll in the Florida Crime Prevention Training Institute and get your crime prevention practitioner's designation. So in 2008, I did that. I received my um, degree in crime professional practitioner's designation and went on to uh, SEPTED, which is crime prevention through environmental design. So I went back to school to do that. I have both of those. And I'm now attending the Citizens, um, the Citizens Police Academy through Fort Myers Police Department. So what you do is a little different than police work in that they're trying to catch people who have already committed crimes. It seems to me like what your company is all about is trying to help people from becoming victims of crime. That's exactly right. Our entire existence is based on one thing. What type of preventions can the average person take before they have to make that 911 call to keep us from becoming victims? Well, I don't want the viewer, any of the viewers on my show to become the next victim of this guy. So what we're going to talk about is sort of some, some of the steps that they can take, some of the measures um, to protect themselves. Um, l let's just talk about, first of all, criminals like this, <coughs> who do they target? What specific types of people, groups of people do they look for generally in a victim? Well, let's go with the, the single women that are living at home and, and what types of things that the, these women can do while they're at home. Um, number one, you, every crime, when a criminal looks at a home, it's perception. He's never seen the home before. He hasn't walked through the neighborhood before. Um, if the criminal is casing the neighborhood, 75% of the time he's driving in his vehicle. He's looking for two signs, a dog sign or an alarm sign. Chances are if he sees both, you're never going to see that criminal. The other criminal is actually knocking on your door, acting like a pizza flyer hanger, a salesman. What they want to know is if you're home during the daytime. Keeping in mind, daytime burglaries outweigh nighttime burglaries by 60% have since 1997. Best time really? for a daytime burglary, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. daytime working hours. So what I tell people, the next time you're at Walmart, Kmart, or Target, get the biggest dog bowl that you can find. Yeah. I tell them if you have a small dog, dog get one dish. big enough you could bathe your small dog in. <laughs> Bring home a collar and chain. As a good dog owner, on that bowl you're going to write a strong name, Rambo, Killer, Cujo, Spike. Fill it with water, put it on the front porch or in the, in the yard. Then you're going to take a collar and chain, put that in there. Now what's that criminal thinking when he sees your, son, when he sees your house? You're going to have a beware dog sign. He's going to almost walk into that dog bowl, he's going to look down and see that collar and chain. And if that Rottweiler or German Shepherd isn't in that chain and he's not on the outside of the house, he's going to be on the inside of the house. I guess you don't even have to have a dog to be able to. That's that absolutely right. right. That's the best part about it. And if, if women are living alone or widowed, what I encourage them to do is go down to the local thrift store and get a size 13 pair of work boots. Muddy those up and stick them on the front porch. Wow, what a great idea. A woman who lives alone, get a muddy pair of work, guys' work <laughs> boots and stick them on the front porch. That's great. All right, when we come back, uh, it's a serious topic, but that, that, that made me chuckle. That's a good one. When we come back from our break, we're going to have more about how to secure your home and to take precautions uh, when you're walking down the street.